Three, two, one, go. All right, welcome to another tutorial for absolute beginners. So when you open Nomad Sculpt, it should be something like this. Um, first things first, this little cube is gonna be very helpful. This is so you know, obviously that's the top, the front. So this is how you know that you're looking at the front of your sculpt. Right now we just have a sphere. So this is a 3D sphere, it's a 3D mesh. Uh, it's comprised of polygons, it's compi comprised of vertices. There's all these words that are very, very confusing. Uh, don't worry too much about them, but when I do say them, when I mention them, uh, I'll remind you of what they are. So for example, this is made up of other smaller shapes like inside it. So it's right now it's 98.3K vertices. So that's a lot. If I look at the wireframe, so the wireframe just kind of is the wireframe that makes up all the shapes that are in this. So if I scroll in, you see that there's like boxes and there's little boxes and little boxes. So, you know, you can take away some of those boxes and this number will get smaller and you can add more boxes and this number will get bigger. So if you take away, it'll be less dense. If you add more, it'll be more dense. If it's very dense, you can add details. If it's less dense, then the details are going to be hard to see because it's just not very dense. Okay, so let's turn the wireframe off and you see a sphere. So if your sphere looks like this, make sure I go to the right one. If your sphere, let's see, smooth shading is off. Okay, so it's, this is this really isn't a good um, a good indication of smooth shading being off. So I'm just gonna do this really quick so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm gonna decimate. So decimating is just taking away some vertices like we were saying before. So I'm gonna decimate a few times. And now you can see the shapes. So yours might look like squares. If it is, then you probably have to just go here or where is it here, this little uh, globe here and make sure that smooth shading is on. Auto for me is on. So if it's off, sometimes you can see these, it looks like pixelated. Turn smooth shading on. Okay, so let's start with deleting the sphere and adding a new sphere. So this is so you'll know how to add shapes. So you tap on, if you have a few of these or whatever, whatever you tap on, that's the mesh that you're working with. Right, right here it says sphere. So that's what this is, a sphere. So if we go here, this is our scene menu. So the more we add things, the more they'll pop up here. So if we add a sphere, you see it's bigger than the other one and it's yellow. You can tap this little eye and it'll, it'll just hide it. So now we can see both of them. We can go to the other sphere and the other one is hidden. So let's delete this. So we have the new sphere, which is bigger. I'm going to hide it. This is the old sphere. So let's delete it. And now let's bring the new sphere back. So this is the new sphere. So let's say we want to move this around. So we use the gizmo. So I'm going to tap front. See the front? Oh, and by the way, this is the grid uh, behind. I might, I'm going to reference this red line as the horizon line. That's like the perfect line to be like the floor. If you're going to make a scene or make a character standing, the red line is perfect for like the floor level. Okay, so the gizmo. The gizmo is like a controller. This is so you can move your shape around in space. Let's take this green arrow and move it up. Move the sphere up. So there you go. So that's the gizmo. Let's hit front again. So the gizmo, there's an orange line here, going like a bigger orange line around it. That's just size. That makes it bigger and smaller. Also, you might, you might see me uh, tap once with two fingers. That's undo. So if I hit front, if I hit undo, it's gonna go back down. Three fingers is redo. I never use that. For some reason, I, I, tap, uh, I tap two fingers to undo, and then if I wanna redo, I always press the arrow for, for some reason. Okay, so you have all these things on the gizmo. It's, it's a little busy. Uh, the little green, the red, the blue, those little spheres, that just stretches it. And you can stretch it in any direction, in any combination you want. You can do one direction, whatever. So, you know, if you wanted an oval, if you wanted like a mento or something, 
um, that's how you would do that. And then if you if we were using a different shape, like let's say we let's go here and we add a box. Okay, and scroll out. And obviously just like a cell phone or something, you pinch you pinch uh, in to make it go back and then you pinch out to bring it forward. Remember here, this is how we're looking at it. So let's look at the left side and you have all these tools. Let's just use the gizmo since we're using gizmo. So now we have a box, so now we can squeeze it so it's sort of thin. We turn to the front, we can squeeze it so it's sort of thin. So that's just how you have control of everything. And let's say you wanted to rotate it, you would use these colored rings to rotate it. And let's say we wanted to rotate it 90 degrees, then you use snap. Snap, 90, then it will just move 90 degrees. So I'll undo it. Okay, so we have a sphere and a box. Let's take this, let's take this little green uh, thingy and we'll just make the box sort of like that. And let's make the whole thing smaller. So remember to make it smaller, this orange ring will make it a little smaller like this. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's say we wanted to make it a little thicker, then you use this blue sphere and you can make it a little thicker. Okay. So let's make a floor. If we're gonna make like a little character, let's make a floor here. Uh, and that way we can get rid of this grid. I don't really like the grid. So we'll go here. We have a sphere and a box. And note, they're both yellow. I'm gonna talk about that in a second. So let's add a cylinder. So we'll tap cylinder. There's our cylinder there. Um, and you can see there's some tools here. We'll take this green and we'll just bring this down to the red line. And then we'll bring the other one up, maybe as wide as that, that box. But it's a little small. I want to make it a little bit bigger. So let's use the gizmo. Even though it's grayed out, remember the gizmo is there. So we'll tap gizmo. And we want to make it bigger. So again, we want to use this orange ring. So we'll make it bigger. Let's look at it from the front. So we'll tap front. And we want to make it a little skinnier. So let's um, smush it together with this green dot. And then let's move it down so the top is right on that red line. Perfect. Okay, so now let's move these other shapes up. So we can grab two shapes at once. So we just go into our scene menu. Okay, so we have sphere, box, we have cylinder. So we'll take this sphere and the box. So now we have them both checked. And now the gizmo is just gonna, it's gonna be in the middle of those two. It's going to sort of act as though it's one big shape, so it's just going to go in the middle. So right now the gizmo the gizmo's in the middle, so we'll move it up. Let's tap front again. So we'll move it up, and maybe we'll give this character some legs. So maybe we'll move it up to about there. You can have some short legs. Maybe we'll make that later. Okay, so we have the floor, which is on that red line, so let's get rid of the grid. So I'm going to go down here and just tap grid so we can get rid of the grid. Okay, I don't even know what this character is going to be, so that's kind of just the basics of how you add shapes and how you move them around. So when I sculpt, there's two things that I always make sure that I do. First, I go into this little camera, and I make sure that I'm on orthographic. If you're on perspective, and you hit front, see how we're seeing the perspective of this cylinder? So imagine if you're trying to line something up with the surface of this cylinder. Let's just say we're trying to line this up. It's harder, like you can kind of do it, but it's harder because of perspective distortion. So we don't want to sculpt in perspective because things always look different. If something is far away, it's going to look smaller. So you just go into here, make sure you're in orthographic to sculpt. So we'll tap orthographic. And now you can see it's easier to line it up because it's flat. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing is I don't like working in white because it's just, it's a little bit hard to see. And as you're working with a lot of things, it's just not the greatest. So what I do is I go to this little round thing. I think this is the one. Nope, the one right next to it, this little shading window, this little sun. And I change it from lit PBR to matte cap. Later on, when we want to paint it, we'll change it back. So all this is a matte cap. This kind of disregards like the lighting and glares and stuff. It just kind of gives an, a, a general lighting for all of these like shapes it's all the same 
and I, it just makes it easier for me to see and it kind of reminds me of clay so I like it uh, of course there's some other matte caps and you can play around with these these will change the look sometimes they're fun to mess around with if you make something and you just kind of want to see it from different you know with different matte caps it's, it's kind of fun but I like to do regular PXG clay. This is default. This should be in your Nomad. All you have to do is tap here. Should be the first one. Okay, so those are the two things that I always do. I like to sculpt in matte cap. And I like to be orthographic. Okay, so for characters. One thing that you should do is don't try to sculpt everything from like a block. When you think about sculpting, uh, if you're like me at first, you kind of think of like marble sculptures of like, you know, Renaissance or whatever, or Baroque period where they, you know, everything is sculpted, sculpted out of a stone. Don't think of it this way. When you're making characters, think of anything that you want to make, break it down in your mind to shapes. So I'm just kind of going to wing a character, but it's going to be from shapes. So this is the head. So let's take the head and let's make it a little bit thinner like this okay and let's uh let's kind of make a little bit more of a, of a shape of a head so what makes things really easier is using symmetry so right now uh this sphere it would be nice if we were going to make a shape of a head if we were to say we wanted to stretch this side out we'd want this side to match it because it's the same it's the head so this is how you do that so first we need to validate uh, validating is kind of weird if you if you've never heard of it or done it it's just one of those things where when you add a shape any all of these shapes are yellow when you add them and that's because they're not validated so when you validate so when you see the gizmo the validate kind of goes away so it's easy to forget about if you're if you're just starting but when you tap gizmo these are the regular shape options for the sphere so you see validate there's a few things that you can do here like little like you know advanced things but if you go to your gizmo or not your gizmo but if you go here and you hit validate now you just see the gizmo you don't see those extra settings now it's ready to be sculpted and used in in your, your sculpture in your scene so now you have all these shapes that come up so if you notice with the square it's not validated you don't have all those shapes so just remember that when you're making things uh, you have to validate them first so we'll validate this box and just to show kind of, you know, it may not ma it may not make sense to have the validation thing, but there's a lot of things that you can do once you once you're a little more advanced in it. For example, uh, let's take this cylinder. It's not validated, but before I validate, let's touch these three little dots and then let's go over here to post subdivision and we'll bring it up to two. Now, I'm not going to pretend like I know all this like technical stuff and like exactly what it does. But I know what it what I needed to do for the most part. So see how now the cylinder is nice and rounded. So I like that. So let's validate it now. So now we have a nice like rounded sphere platform. I just like that better. So, you know, once you kind of, you know, mess around with Nomad a lot, you'll start to develop and get a little bit more, um, you know experimenting with things and learning about things and seeing tutorials for more advanced things but for now don't worry about any of that stuff all right so the head so we were talking about symmetry symmetry is very important you're going to use it a lot that's this little icon here so if i tap it there's all these all these things planes x y z so first things first just scroll down till you see show line and tap that and then we go to the sphere. If you zoom in, you see this red line. That's your symmetry line. So this coincides with what you choose here. So if we turn X off and do Y, this is where it gets a little, a little weird, but bear with me. So the reason why you don't see the green thing on the sphere, I'll show you why. Um, and I'm not going to go too deep into this, but I just want to tell you a little bit about it. So there's two types of symmetry in any project there's two types of symmetry there's the world symmetry and then there's the local symmetry so for example you're in a room right now let's just imagine that you're in a room and the room is like a box okay just imagine your room is a box and you may not be sitting in the center of the room 
So you may not, there's a center from like the front of the room to the back of the room. There's a center from the left of the room and the right of the room. There's a center and also from the floor to the ceiling. So imagine that very center of the room, that's world center. So this is the project. So that center is world center. It's probably, it's wherever you, wherever you, if you add a shape, let's say we add a icosahedron, <laughs> which I never use. So if we add a shape, that shape is going to go, the middle of that shape is going to be world center. So, you know, we moved everything off of world center. So I'm just going to get rid of it. So when you're using symmetry, just remember that the method is local and world. And the reason why X, the reason why we can see the red line on the sphere is because X is up and down. So as long as it's up and down this middle, you're going to see that line, even on, you know, whatever shape it is, even if it's on the square, the line is going to be the same unless we move the, the shape. Okay, so that's the first thing. Just remember, world center is the center of the project. But there's also a local center. So imagine local center. Let's say, okay, you're in your room. So you can imagine around where world center is you know it's probably somewhere behind you and to your left maybe i don't know wherever it is in your room so that's world center but let's say you take an apple and you eat the apple you don't even chew it you just eat the apple whole so let's imagine that now that apple in your stomach is at the local center so it's at the center of your body from the apple to your head from the apple to your feet, you know, and from, you know, both sides of your of your waist, you know, both sides of the, the sides of your body. So let's just imagine that that apple is in the center of your body. That's it's at your it's at the local center, you know, so you can always walk to world center and be in the center of the room and then the apple will be in the center of the room as well. But you could also walk around to the, wherever you want to go. The apple will always be in the local center. So that's why when I go to the green, I don't see it on the sphere because I would probably only see it if I brought the sphere down to where that world line is. I can't really. Oh, there it is. So it's somewhere there. See it? So you can kind of see it now. Uh, if I if i just solo this see you can see it so that's that world center that's where the line is going across for world center so again uh don't worry don't worry too much about that uh but i just i just feel like i have to at least give you that really rudimentary rundown of the different symmetries <clears throat> so to make a long story short there was already long if i wanted to use the y i would have to change it to local and now it's locally on the sphere so that's that's the difference okay so let's say we want to use x and let's hit front let's use move for example i use move a lot so over here the radius makes the move tool bigger and smaller so for example now when you tap your sphere you see these two dots that's kind of like where your, you know, where your movement is going to be. So it's a good indication of just showing you the symmetry. If we were to turn this off, then you only see one. See, you only see one dot. You turn it on, and then it's both sides. So if you were going, if we were going to make the shape of a head, let's make the radius a little bit bigger for the move tool, and then we can kind of just stretch it. We can kind of stretch it like this. Maybe we'll do a head sort of this shaped, something like that. So now this is 3D. So you also have to do, you know, the back. So when I shape the front, I'm like, okay, so if this is a head, it kind of has to be, kind of has to come back a little. Maybe I'll look at it from the top view. Make sure you're on the sphere. You got to make sure that you stay on the same um, mesh. Because if you accidentally touch something else, you might, you know, if I accidentally touch this, then I'll be moving that. So you got to be careful of that, too. So let's just, you know, give them a little bit of a head at least. 
in the back. So we take a look from the side and then we have to kind of make sure the head is head-like from all angles. So I think that's pretty good. Okay, so now we have this little uh, square box. So we tap the box, we tap gizmo, and let's say we want this to be his little body. So let's maybe we'll shrink it. Let's move it back a little bit. Maybe we'll move it up. So like, let's say his body is kind of like this. Maybe we can make it a little wider. It, yours doesn't have to be exactly the same as mine. You know, I'm kind of just kind of just winging it. Okay, so if this is going to be a body, we don't really want it like like hard like this. We don't want it hard. Uh, so what we can do is, so the box is 3,526 vertices, which is not very much. So most of the tools, like this is, it'll be pretty easy to smooth it out because it's not very dense. If it was very dense, then it would be harder to, it would be harder to smooth. Uh, so we'll do that a little bit later. For now, let's just take the smooth tool. Also, your tools might not be in the same configuration. So we'll take the smooth tool. We'll make sure we have symmetry on. So let's say we wanted to smooth um, not only the left and right, but also the front and the back. So that's just like a smart thing. That's, the more, that's an efficient way to smooth this shape. So we go to symmetry and then we just find, okay, we have this red line. So we know it's going to be um, here and here, but let's try z oh see we moved we moved z back we moved this this square back so remember we have to just change it to local once you change it to local then it should be local so that's pretty good um we could also do the bottom and the top too if we wanted to you could do green and then it would be the bottom and the top but again i might want to make sure that i'm okay it's already on local so now you can actually smooth everything at once but you see, it's actually making it really, really small. <laughs> so, so it made it really, really small because it was um, not very dense at all. So let's make it a little bit more dense. There's two ways to do this. So you just saw, just so you know, I, un I just hit undo by tapping with two fingers. So let's just add some let's add some geometry to this box. So we're just gonna raise this number up. So let's go to this little thing right here. It could be something else, but it's right next to this scene menu. So we wanna go here, multi-res, and we wanna subdivide. So what subdivide does, so if we zoom in and I hit the wireframe, you don't have to do this, I just wanna show you. See how big these boxes are? So if you go here and multi-res and subdivide, See how now there's four squares in each of those boxes. And now instead of 3,000 something, it's 14,000. 14, so let's try to smooth again. So see, it still smooths, but it's not as, it's not as uh, severe as it was before. So now we can sort of just smooth out the body and it's not as, it's not as bad as before. Okay, so let's turn the wireframe off. So that's a little bit better. Okay, I actually wanna stretch the body out a little bit, so I'm gonna use my gizmo and just stretch it out a little bit. Maybe move it a little bit further back. Okay, I think that's, that's pretty good. So next, let's put some legs on this character. So again, what's the what's the best way to make legs? I mean, we could use this shape. Uh, I usually tend to do uh, maybe a sphere. Let's use a sphere. Let's take the gizmo and let's move the sphere up, back. So this is only gonna be one, one leg, but again, Remember that this is invalidated, so we have some options, and this is where we're gonna use those options. So let's hit front. So first we need to make this sphere smaller. So hopefully you remember 
how to make it smaller. You just take this orange ring, and this is the size, this is the size. So we'll make that smaller. Okay, so now uh, let's move it over to one side. And we're just going to pretend, we're not going to worry about the other leg for now. We're just going to adjust this one leg for now. So let's move it up. And maybe we'll make it a little bit thinner, something like that. We'll move it up a little bit more. And if you want to add a little more shape, um, you can do the move. But we're not going to actually, we're not going to validate it yet. We're just going to leave it. We're just going to leave it. Uh, so let's, let's, so when you use your gizmo, remember this all disappears. So we'll tap gizmo and then tap mirror. So now it's mirrored. So again, what it's mirroring is it's using the world center and it's mirroring that X. See how this is red? So it's mirroring anything on this side would be on this side. So that's, that's what it's mirroring right now. So the really, there's only one sphere here. And if you look here, there's a mirror and there's one sphere. And we can actually validate this sphere. It still looks like two, but it's really only one, but it's in a mirror. So make sure you tap on the sphere part. And yeah, let's just tap on that sphere. And then we can kind of adjust this. We can use the other tools. Let's say we use move. And we don't really need symmetry. This is where symmetry can be a bit tricky because if we turn symmetry on for this sphere, let's go into symmetry and put it on local. So now we can see it. Uh, so now the symmetry is going to be just for the individual leg. The same thing is going to happen over here because it's mirrored. So we can kind of just adjust it to make it look how we want. We'll adjust this back. So maybe something like this. Maybe we'll take the top and just kind of shrink it in a little bit. So we'll do something like that. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Let's tap on the box. Let's get rid of all these symmetries. So let's tap symmetry and let's turn off Z and Y. So now we just have X, which is the default. Let's use the flatten tool. So I want to make the radius a little bit bigger, maybe around 150. And I just want to flatten off these edges. Maybe we'll just flatten off the front a little bit. Just make the front a little more rounded. Okay, something like that. Now you can see it's ripply and ugly. This is when you smooth. Anytime you use any of those other shapes, just smooth it out. Just smooth it out. Kind of went back to what it looked like before. So if that happens, then I might go a little bit more dramatic with it. You notice I just made this the uh, made it a little bit bigger. And if I want to maintain this, sometimes what I have to do is voxel remesh. So we changed, we changed the surface of this. So there's a thing called voxel remeshing, and this will sort of recalculate all of the shapes in here. So it will recalculate them so they're most efficient. And what you can do is you can voxel remesh at a higher resolution or a lower resolution. So it's similar to what we did before when we had the the squares and then we did subdivide and it added it's similar to that but it's a little different i don't really know the technical reasons why but it's a little different i use voxel remeshing a lot more so first let's save we haven't done that yet so we'll just tap on the folder save and let's just put noob or you can name it whatever you want i'll hit okay so now we have it saved you should save before you do voxel remeshing and especially the more intricate you get you should just save it often okay so now we're on the square and we're going to voxel remesh the body now later on we can voxel remesh a lot of these shapes together and make one new shape 
But for now, we're just going to voxel remesh this one piece. So we want to go up here, the same place multi-resolution was, voxel. And then we go down here, and you see remesh, but you see resolution. So 95 is a pretty low resolution. So usually I'll go, like, maybe for something like this, maybe like 175 is fine because I don't want it too dense because I still want to be able to smooth it and I don't really need it too dense right now that's something like later on when you have details then we might bring this up to like 500 or 600 for now 175 or so is fine and we'll just hit remesh multi-resolution will be lost don't worry about that just hit okay so now everything is recalculated so now I'll smooth it and it really should maintain more of the shape that we had before it's not going to go back to what we had so that's a little bit better okay yeah that's good okay so you can see how i just use shapes and i use the tools to sort of make something that looks very different from a sphere a regular box and another sphere uh, so this is just how you should think about your sculpts when you're using this app all right, so let's um, let's just polish this character out. Let's just do a simple character. Uh, let's give him a little tukis. That's butt, by the way. Also, one thing that you should always do is name your shape, your meshes. So this is a sphere. Let's tap these three little dots. Name, and let's just put head, and just go down the line. Body. The mirror is the leg, so I'm going to name the mirror, and I'm going to name the sphere, and just for this one, I'll just put floor, FLR maybe, just to keep everything organized, and then I'm going to save it. And I just, I don't have auto save on, so I save often. Okay, so this looks good. So let's bring our character to the surface. Let's start with that. So we'll go to our scene. We'll just grab everything except for the floor. So make sure that's not checked. Gizmo. We'll hit front. And let's bring this down to the floor. We'll put the feet a little bit into the floor. Just like that. Okay, so let's turn it to the left. We'll tap left there. Let's trim the bottom of these feet. So we'll use the trim tool and we'll use the rectangle. So when using the trim tool and rectangle, all of the area in white will, will trim. So I'm gonna use the top of this floor. So let's just make a square. See how I just dragged the square up? And I'm gonna go a little bit underneath where I want it to trim, a little bit underneath, and then I'll just let it go. And if I hide the floor, you'll see that now the, the, the legs are trimmed. Okay, so I'll unhide the floor. Okay, so let's give him a little tukus. And when you think about the shape, it's just gonna be two spheres. So we'll kind of do similar to what we did with the legs. So we'll add a sphere, okay. And actually I'll show you the second way to uh, get kind of what we did with the legs. There's another way to do it. So let's move this and then resize it about where we need it. So let's move it to the back, we'll resize it. That's probably pretty good. So we'll just move it to one side. We'll pretend that the other one is there. We'll move it into this shape. I think that's pretty good. And maybe we'll just squash it a little bit. You doesn't have to have too much back there, just a little bit. So now we need another one. So instead of hitting mirror, which you can do, I want to show you a different way to do it. So you can validate, and you can do this with anything that you have made. If you want to make two heads instead of one, you can do the same thing. So now we have this sphere. So let's rename it to bum. So now we have this one sphere named bum. We can add a mirror to it. Add, and these are repeaters. So all of these, these are fun to play around with. 
all these do is just like a mirror, it will take one and it will mirror it in a certain way or a certain shape or a certain pattern. Radial is just, it'll make like, a, you know, it'll make them in a round. Array will just make like, you know, rows of whatever you need. Curve, if you make a curved line and you can just add shapes to that. So different things like that. Mirror is just a mirror. So it just mirrors it on the other side. And now you see it here. I'm going to rename this bum because eventually when we join them together, it'll take the name of the what's in red. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. Um, and you can play around with it. Maybe we want to, uh, you know, give them a little, a little shape like that. Maybe you want to kind of like make the bottom a little wider, whatever you want to do, but you can, you know, you can play around with them and just, you know, make it cute. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so maybe we want to give him some, maybe not ears, but well, I guess we can give him ears. Let's give him something. So we have the bum. Let's go ahead and actually let's take, so if you tap on both of these, if you tap on the red one last, you'll see this validate. So we'll hit validate and we'll hit join children. So what this does, join children will take this, the bum, and we'll join both of those shapes together as one new shape. If you hit keep instance, that means that it's going to join them, but it'll create two shapes. And if you mess with one, it'll, it'll still be mirrored in the other one. So that's keep instances. I know it's hard to remember because this is kind of like a weird way to put it, but that's what it means. So it's, it's making two different shapes, but they're still linked. It's almost like they're still mirrored. If you uninstance, it'll make two different bums that are not connected anymore. So we want join children, yes. So now we just have one bum and it's just one new shape now. So that's all, that's all that we did there. Okay, so let me make sure that, I just wanna double check that you can see this clearly, okay. Okay, so now we have the legs we have the body, we have the bum. So let's make some little arms. And there's a few way that we can do arms, but let's use the tube tool. So let's use tube. And the tube tool is great. It's, it's it much improved from the other uh, versions. And let's use path. So we're going to concentrate on just doing one side because we can always mirror it. So that makes, that makes everything so much easier. So let's say this little arms are like out, we'll make some fingers or something. Or actually, well, I'll just show you how to use it. So um, first, let me undo it, hold on. I wanna start fresh so I can show you. So what you need to do is touch the screen, drag down, remember we're using path, just remember that we're using path there. You drag, lift up from the screen. And then you go to a new spot, touch the screen, and drag, touch the screen and drag, touch the screen and drag. That's how you get your tube. So then you, and obviously you can adjust it. If you want it to curve more in here, you can touch it and you can add this new node and you can bring it out. So you can, obviously you can make endless you know, you can make endless shapes and things like that for your tube, if you're doing wiring or something. This little green dot will give you your tube. I don't know why I made such a crazy thing when I'm making an arm. So let's make an arm. <laughs> so let's start from around where the shoulder is. Tap the screen. Drag. Still on the screen. Oh, oh, I don't know what happened. Path. Tap the screen. Drag. Okay, we have one there. We'll do something like this. Boom. I think that's it. We don't really need like a crazy arm. It's usually never in the place you want it to be. So you can either drag these dots to put it where you want, or you can use the, or you can use the gizmo up here and you can like move it sort of. So you have some options of how you can maneuver it around. There's also this little tiny orange thing in here, like right at the center of the gizmo that you can kind of just move it around freehand if you didn't know okay so 
um, we want to get back to the tube option. So just remember, you can go here and tap tube again, and then you have your nodes. Okay, so these are his little arms. So it's, we kind of want to put it, oh, you notice how it's not going into the body? If that ever happens, turn off snap. Now that we turned off snap, now we can put this into the body and it's not gonna be fighting to snap to the surface. If you wanted like a, a like something going all over him, then you do snap and it won't go in the body, it'll just stay on the surface of the head. So snap, just remember, snap is, is good, unless you don't need it. Okay, so we'll pull his little arm down like this. Maybe we'll make it a little bit forward. If you want, you can kind of do his arm up like this. something like that like he's like a little monster or something like that i think we'll stick with that okay so quickly tube tool this is your tube you got one orange node here this does the si this changes the size of the tube okay so let's say we like this but we don't want it just like a noodle tube we want to change maybe we want to make it a little smaller at the shoulder so this is radius so you change radius now there's two nodes, now there's two nodes. So we make this one smaller, and notice that the other one is the same size, but now the arm is smaller at the, at the shoulder. So we can kind of go like this, we can still, we can still move it, we still have freedom to move it. But let's say now we want, like it looks too much like a horn or something like that. Radius again, now there's three nodes. So now we can make this bigger as well, so we can adjust it. Okay, that looks nice, but maybe this is a little too small, so we'll make that a little bit bigger. Maybe something like that. Always remember, you can add another sphere too. If you wanted to like, you know, maybe make this a little bit bigger. So you can do something like that as well. I think I like it with this with the four. It's a little big though. Remember, you can always make the whole thing smaller by using the gizmo and this orange thing too. So you can you have some options. Okay, I kind of like that. Let's leave it. So that'll be our that'll be our arm. I like it. It's a little, oh, it still feels a little bit. Remember, you don't have to make your arm like me. I don't know. It just feels a little. I think I like this a little bit better. I think I'm gonna put this a little bit more forward. You know, but get get creative with it. Yeah, I like this. I'm happy with this. I'm happy with that. Okay, so so we like this, we like this too. We're happy with this. So let's say we want to now just have it be able to use the other tools. Same thing, we just have to validate it. So we do validate. Okay, so now it looks pretty good. And we don't want to mirror it yet because we don't, we want to put some fingers on it first, I think. So let's add fingers. And there's a few ways to add fingers, but I think I'm going to do with tube tool again. So we're going to double up with the tube tool uh, because why not? So let's use the path again. So remember, we have. Oops, we have the head, we have the tube. Let's rename this arm. We want to rename it or else we'll forget. So that's the arm. Okay, so all we did was tap these and we just we just renamed it. That's all. Legs, everything is good. So let's save. Okay. So now we're gonna have, we have the other tool. I'm going to turn snap off. We don't need snap. So we're using path again. Or actually, let's use curve since I didn't show you curve. It's... Uh, kind of similar, but all curve is, is you just make the curve and it just adds these as you need. The only reason I don't use it that much is because sometimes it adds too too many and I have to drag them together to get rid of them. Kind of thing, you know? And then I have to drag them in place. So you can do it that way, or you can just do with uh, path, which is what I usually use. And I'm like, okay, I want this to have three fingers. So I'll make one here. Boom. And I don't need to make another one because I can always clone this one. 
Okay, so fingers. Let's make an arch. Kind of like pointing forward. And it'll take some time. You notice how quickly I'm sort of maneuvering this because I'm used to the tube tool. I'm used to moving around the screen. So give yourself the time that you need. You're not gonna be able to like just jump in and do it that quickly, but you'll get it. You'll get it soon enough. So I think that looks pretty good. Um, and I wanna show you the profile. I wanna show you the profile. Very, very useful. Okay, so I don't think we're gonna really change the, um, the radius. I don't think we need like one side to be bigger or smaller. Let's just make the whole finger bigger. So sausage finger. So something like that. Maybe, maybe that's a little too big. Okay. So he has his little finger like that. I want to make it curve like a little macaroni noodle or something. So we have a little finger. And let's make the fingers more square. You know what I mean? Because like that's the thing that you might see in a lot of like 3D, um, professional 3D modelers and stuff like that. The fingers are kind of based off, rec they're kind of rectangular, if you notice. So... What's really good is we can use this profile. You can see it's grayed out, but it's actually right next to it where it says profile. You just tap that and then you get this square. You get this beautiful square. And you see it's really ugly. Mine is really ugly. So it's because it's very, it's only 507. So it's, it's not dense at all. So let's see if we can just raise it. Let's press these three dots and let's just bring it up one. Let's see, do we want to do that? Um, let's see, what's a better plan? We'll bring the tube topology to 40. Uh, we'll bring this up to one. Okay, that's a little bit better. But you can see how this can get a little, this can get a little crazy. All I did was I just moved the tube topology up to 40 and the post subdivision. It just made it a little more, see now it's 3000 something. It was just a little bit too dense before. It looks too ugly. I know I shouldn't base if it, things look ugly, but I, I can't help it. So it looks good, but it's a little too fat. We need to make it thinner. So we can use this profile thing. And you see this box here. And this is like if we were looking that this box is like we're looking at it like this. That's what that that's what that profile box is. So if I hit profile, that's what this is. So I should be able to bring this down. Bring this down. And we should get a nice thin finger. Something like this. Now, is that too thin? It might be a little bit too thin. Maybe we want to make it a little bit bigger. Maybe we want to do this. Maybe we want to add a node here and kind of give it a little bit of flavor. We can add one here as well. You know, we want to give it a little, that little bit of flavor there. Maybe it's still a bit, we want to make it a little bit fatter. So we'll bring this down some. Maybe we'll even add a little something there. Okay, so something like that. So now we have something a little bit closer to a finger. So now the only thing I want to do is see how it's not like we want to just make it straight like with the, with the thingy, with the cylinder. So we can also twist. I'm doing a lot of this stuff just to show you the tools. So there's also twist that's pink and this will twist it. So that can come in useful. So we wanna twist it. So now it's like, it's kind of even. It looks like it's evenly coming off the hand. We can turn twist, we can turn twist. Oh, I guess we have to leave it on. There you go. So we'll leave twist on and we'll just kind of move this back a little bit. There we go. So I like it. I like it. So let's validate it. It looks good. I'm going to do a save. Okay, so when we smooth this, let's see what happens. So we're just using smooth. Um, I don't think we want to use symmetry. Let's see if I, let me check local. No, we don't want to use it because see the symmetry is all weird because it's like a tube. So we don't even deal with symmetry. We'll just leave that off. So if we smooth this, so we get a nice little smooth finger, but let's say you want this a little more round, like a, 
you know, so let's just take flatten and like flatten this front end a little bit. So you flatten that front end and it looks a little bit more like a finger. The top can stay flat, but I like to make this bottom part nice and round with the flatten tool. See how it's nice and round. So there we go. So now we'll just smooth it. Again, smoothing it just keeps everything looking clean. Okay, that looks good. All right, and remember if you wanna do some changes, you can also like use the gizmo and maybe you wanna make it a little smaller. You know, you can always adjust things with the gizmo as well. Okay, so let's clone it. So we can add, we can give him another finger. So we'll just go up here. So see this tube here? That's the finger. So I'm going to rename it finger. And let's tap those again and clone. So now we have finger one. So we want to move this uh, right next to it. Uh, and right now it's oriented to the finger, but it might be easier to hit a line. If you hit a line, then it's just going to align the gizmo to the world like center stuff. It's not going to be, it's not going to worry about the orientation of the finger. So sometimes it's very useful because sometimes the gizmo can get really complicated looking. So just remember that you can do that. If you get really confused, just hit a line and you're like, okay, no matter how I do this, the gizmo is always going to be in the same way. All I have to do is move it and continue to move it. Oops, take it off snap because snap, remember, that snaps it um, a defined amount. But sometimes uh, sometimes a line makes it easier because the gizmo won't move. It'll just kind of stay how it is and you can continue to move things around and the gizmo won't move. Whereas if you don't have it on, then you know maybe that's easier for you. You can kind of move it and the gizmo will move according to where you put the finger. And just remember you can rotate it with the rings. You can move it back like this. So again, that can be a little bit, it can be a little confusing. I think I want to rotate this one a little. Let me use a line. No. Nope. I just want to move it maybe a little bit closer, maybe rotate it a little bit. Maybe something like this. Let's take a look. Yeah, that looks good. I like it. If you want, you can you can make three fingers. There's also a clone here. So if you tap on whatever the mesh is you want to clone and then hit clone. And before you do anything else, you have to move it or else uh, it'll like the clone. It just won't clone if you move something else or if you click on something else. So you can clone there too. You can give them this third little finger. So maybe this finger is like Just kind of move it in there. It's a pinky, so maybe it's a little smaller. Why not? Move it up a little bit. Yeah, so we have something like that. So now you can you can give him three or four fingers. Oh, that pinky is quite small. Let me get a little bit bigger. Okay, so now let's make the thumb. So I'm gonna clone this finger just because it's the closest over there. I'll hit clone. And then I will just move it kind of to where the thumb would be. So sort of over here, we'll rotate it until it kind of looks thumbish. Rotate, rotate, we'll bring it in. We need to bring it forward. And down, we need to make it a little bit further away from the other fingers so that it looks like it's in the right spot. Again, this can be a little bit tricky, but you just kind of have to, you know, kind of get used to how that works. Okay, good. Okay, so that'll be the fingers. So I'm gonna do a quick save. So if we're happy with that, let's just combine all of these. So. We'll take the fingers, all of the fingers, and the arm, and we'll voxel remesh them together. So 
uh, sorry, I was about to use the shortcut here. It's the same thing, but I'll do it the way that I showed you. So I'll go up here, voxel, remesh. Let's bring the resolution to maybe 250. And then we'll remesh all of those together. And if you ever get this, if you ever get something like that, just hit undo, tap the shape that did it. Remember, it's really small. So what we have to do is tap here, multi-res, and then subdivide. So it's, let's see if it does it now. So now we'll take the arm and all of these fingers and we'll go to here, voxel, remesh. There we go, so that's a little bit better. So now we'll take smooth and let's just smooth these together because now it's just one shape. So we've made one shape. So what we did was just use the shapes to make fingers and then we just combine them all together and now we have one shape which is the hand all right okay so i want to try to get this most of this done within an hour <laughs> i don't think that's going to happen all right so let's do some ears really quick let's add some spheres or a sphere we'll use gizmo we'll move it up back over to one side we have to figure out what kind of ear we want I'm gonna shrink it and maybe we'll stretch it this way and maybe we'll sandwich it in a little bit now sometimes I just like to use you know just regular shapes like this and like kind of just make like really simple ear type shapes something like that maybe use these rings to like maybe make it kind of go outward a little bit so I like that. So I'm going to I'm going to actually uh, mirror it. So remember, we were on gizmo. We can tap that. We can tap mirror. And then there's one on the other side. We validate. We can use move. And then if you want to make them a little more ear like, you can just maybe maybe stretch them down with the move tool. You know, you can kind of do what you want. If you want them a little more cat like, you can make them a little sharper. So you can just kind of play with the shapes a little bit. I don't think I want mine that big I think I actually want mine smaller so I'm going to shrink mine and I kind of like I kind of like they're just kind of poking off the head a little bit like that maybe even a little bit shorter yeah I like little like stubby ears that's what I want okay good um, and if you want let's say you wanted to make um, kind of like the impression of the ear inside there. You can use something like layer. You can hit sub. And make sure you're on the ear. So essentially, this is the intensity of it. So if you lower this, this is the size of it. And this is the intensity. So what layer does, if, let's put the intensity on 30. And we'll just go like this. See how that made that impression? So if we were to in increase it, it makes it a lot deeper. And if we were to bring it down really low to like seven, it's very shallow. So it's kind of taking like a layer away. I'm gonna put it to about 25 and I'll just make a little, a little round part like this. Remember, the ear is a mirror, so the same thing will happen on the other side. Okay, so you can do something like that. And then what I would do is, first, I would uh, voxel remesh this sphere. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rename this ear. Okay, this is an ear as well. Let's just name it ear as well. So we rename those ear. Let's voxel remesh it at uh, 175. Again, this is a shortcut. I should be doing it up here. Voxel, remesh 175. Okay, so now it's a little more solidified. After you do anything, just smooth it. Smooth it out until it looks nice and clean. Okay, here we go. Looks nice and clean. So let's take the arm or the finger. Let's rename it arm. 
Okay. And we want to just add a mirror. Remember what we did before? So arm, add, mirror. If this happens, then you know that you weren't on, uh, the symmetry wasn't on world. So just undo and tap on the arm and then tap on the symmetry and just put world. So now you see how this jumped to here. So that's the middle. And then just do the same thing. You can do add and mirror and it'll pop to the other side. Okay, so let's give him a face. Let's give him eyes. So let's add a sphere. But be careful when you add spheres and they're next to a mirror, it'll just go in there. So let's long press on the sphere and bring it up and just rename it I. Okay. And we'll use our gizmo and let's bring it up to the head. Shrink it. Let's bring it out so you can kind of see it. Shrink it again. And maybe we want to flatten it a little bit like that. So we'll move it in. But that actually might be a cute little nose, if I'm honest with you. It might be a cute nose. So what you can do is you can clone it. And you can take this one and you can name it Nose. You know, if you're not sure, if you see something you might like, you can validate it. So now we have Nose. But we can also go back to the eye, do the gizmo, and then we can keep going with the eye. Now what I would do is just, I would just angle this sphere using the gizmo. I would just kind of angle it so it's like, you know, goes with like the surface of the, of the head. This might be a little bit too big. Maybe we can make it smaller. But this is an easy way to make an eye. You just make it like, you know, along along the the face. So let's mirror it. So it looks cute. I like to make eye whoops. I like to make eye sockets. So what I'm gonna do is we can use layer. We just use layer. So this is a good uh, way to use it again. So let's tap the head. I want to make the head a little more dense. Um, because that looks okay, but we can do better than that. So let me do a quick save. Let's make the head a little more dense. So we'll voxel remesh. Oh, let me do it up here. So we'll voxel remesh. 160 is fine. So we'll remesh this. Okay, you'll see it has these little things, but we'll smooth them out later. So now we use layer and see the difference? It's a lot cleaner. So remember, we're on sub. We're using layer. And... So let's just pretend this isn't here. Let's make like an eye socket. So we'll just make like an eye socket shape. So maybe something like that. Make it kind of wide and round going towards the back. You can do another layer too and make it a little deeper. But you just can't lift off. Once you start going with your layer, then you have to kind of maintain it. Okay, so now we have Excuse me. Now we have an eye socket area. We can just smooth this out, make it look really nice. Okay, so now we have two proper eye sockets. So we tap on the eyes. Let's push them back a little bit. Okay. So the eye is in a mirror, but we need to validate it. So let's go to the gizmo. We'll validate. So now we can use move. And we just want to make these eyes a little more interesting. So let's kind of use the move tool, make it a little bit bigger. The reason I make the move tool a little bit bigger is because it just gives me a nice smooth movement. Okay, so we'll make this, we'll just make the eyes a little more interesting. And we'll kind of move them. We can kind of push them down into the body a little bit. Something like that. I think it's just a little more interesting. The nose looks good. I don't know if I want to keep the nose. Let's see what it looks like without. We'll just hide it. Okay. And let's say we just want to make a mouth. I guess we're going over an hour. I apologize, but not really. So let's use mask and we'll make the mouth. So we'll tap on the sphere and we're going to use mask. 
So you want to make sure you don't have unmasked checked. You want to make sure you have this line here because we just want it to be symmetrical. Okay, so you want to make sure you have symmetry on. So with line, you go like this and we'll just add and you can see how easy it is to kind of make a mouth, you know, however we want it shaped. Now there's a bunch of different ways you can, you know, you can shape a mouth. You can kind of do it like this, which is kind of nice. You can do it a little lower if you want. You can do the mouth kind of like down here if you wanted to add like keep the nose or something like that. This is where you can get really creative. You can actually make the mouth up here. And if you just have like a small mouth up there, maybe from here to here, something like that. And then maybe I'll just make it, yeah, just something really simple like that, I think. Nothing too crazy. I think that's good. So now what we want to do is invert this mask. So we'll go to mask, mask options, or mask settings, invert. So now everything else is masked except for the area that we drew. So now we can use the gizmo and, you know, you can pull it in, you can pull it out. So you can do anything uh, with the area that uh, you had masked off before. So now we can move it back and we kind of have a cavity for the mouth. Even make it a little bit bigger. So maybe something like this. Let's move it back a little bit more. Whoop. So maybe something like that. So now we just go back to the mask settings and we can clear it. And now we have, you know, kind of like a little mouth. So what I want to do first is uh, I want to use move on the head and I kind of want to just pull this out a little bit. Yeah, just kind of pull that out a little bit. It just kind of looks better to me. And maybe a little bit on the bottom too. We'll just kind of pull this out a bit. Something like that, I think looks a little bit better. And we can even use clay. And let's kind of give them a little bit more of a bottom lip. So we're using clay, make sure you don't have sub on. We'll use symmetry. You can see, you know, not, not too big, but clay will just add clay. So we'll just kind of add clay around the bottom part here. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, it's interesting. So now that we had that, let's recalculate all the things that we changed in this head. So let's do a quick save. And by recalculate, of course, I mean voxel remesh. So we'll go here, we'll voxel remesh. Hey, yeah, let's keep it at 210. So we'll hit remesh. And now we can kind of smooth everything out. So we'll just smooth out this mouth. We'll smooth out what we did for the bottom of the mouth and the lip. We'll smooth out inside the mouth. Yeah, there we go. Okay, good. So now I want to take drag, and this is something that I kind of I find fun. I want to take drag and I want to drag the corners of these, the corners of the mouth back. Like that. So that's just going to give them a little bit more character. If I can, here we go, something like that. Okay, so Al, you know, another thing that I want to do is I want to add clay. And I want to add clay right above this because this is a little thin here. So if we use clay and we just kind of do this sort of motion, just to sort of help us with like the cheeks. But this is like the fun part of sculpting when you kind of do stuff like that and you can kind of give them some nice cheeks and kind of just fill in that. So just do a little bit of that there and then just smooth it out. It's a little bit better. So now that we did that, let's take the eye and let's just move the eye up a little bit 
just using the move tool, give it a little bit of breathing room between the eye and the mouth. So something like something like that looks okay. I kind of want it a little bit more flat, but uh, and I like I like moving the eye around and trying to find, you know, trying to find how I want the eye to look. It's starting to look very buggy. Maybe the eye needs to be a little bit smaller. Let's see, so sometimes you just have to experiment until you kind of get to something that you like. Honestly, like you just, that's the only way to do it. I want to make the bottom of the eye a little bit appear a little bit more flat. I think that's what I want here. So do that, pull it out a little bit. I like that. Okay, I think that looks good. And here's another little sneaky fun thing you can do. You can take crease. Crease is a great tool. Make sure you're on the head and you can sort of extend the that mouth out a little bit. And then you can take clay and you can actually build on uh, the crease. You can put a little bit more of the clay on top of the crease. make those cheeks kind of pop out a little bit more and every now and again you just voxel I like to voxel remesh maybe like 220 um, just to kind of like solidify what I'm doing otherwise the mesh will just get more and more soft and you may not want it to, to do that okay I also want to drag down this a little bit more the mouth Looks kind of funny. I kind of like it. I kind of like it, but it looks kind of funny. <laughs> he's kind of cute, but he's kind of funny looking too. My character would always kind of look like that though. I'll smooth out the eyes a little bit. And if this, if it's a, uh, if part of the thing is poking out through, just tap on the head because that's the head part poking through and you can take clay and sub and it will actually get rid of clay. So now it gets, just gets rid of that. Very, very useful. I think I want his head to be a little less square on the bottom. So I'm just going to take flatten and kind of just flatten it out a little bit. Yeah, just make it, I just wanted it a little be a little bit more round. And then of course I'll just smooth it out. I like that, I like it. Okay, here's another little fun trick that I like to do. I like to take flatten, and then I like to flatten. So we have this here, and then around the top, I just like to flatten that plane out a little bit. I think that looks nice and then really gently I'll take smooth and maybe just smooth that out I like it okay good it's coming along very nicely okay so now for his feet I want to give him like little uh, little feet we're almost there so let's add two more spheres or one more sphere so we'll shrink it and then we're going to bring it over to just one of his feet and now we'll we'll just use this green to kind of like um you know squash it a little bit and then you just move it back into his foot and you might want to like spread it out maybe make it a little bit wider something like that 
but I kind of like that. I think that's cute. And you can also, um, you can put it so if, if you want the toes kind of like facing outward a little bit, you can kind of move it over, you can move it inwards. So you can kind of do whatever you want to do there. Maybe make it a little bit taller. I like that. Okay, so now I'll just tap Gizmo and then tap Mirror and then we have one on the other side. Really easy, really simple. So let's validate those. Let's go into our menu here and we'll just tap on this mirror. So those are the, this, those are the shapes that we just added and then we'll just validate them. And these are the feet. So we'll just rename them feet. Okay. And now we'll just trim the feet. So let's hit left, make sure you're on the feet, trim, rectangle. And again, this is, this is what we're trimming. I'll just show you, because you see that the foot is like that, which we don't want. So we'll just trim the foot. We'll make this rectangle and then we'll just trim it underneath. There we go. So now he has cute little toes. Okay, so we're gonna do this with two more spheres and I swear we'll be done. So let's add another sphere. Let's name it teeth. Or I like to say teethies. Okay, we'll use our gizmo. We're gonna bring it up. We'll shrink it and then we'll flatten it a little bit with this blue. So we'll shrink that. We'll move it back into the head. Okay, we'll move it over a little bit and then we'll hit mirror. So now he has two teeth. We'll use our gizmo and we're just gonna concentrate on the one tooth. So we'll do like that. We'll hit clone and then we'll move the clone over like this. So we'll tilt it and then we'll move it back. Whoops. And you can kind of just use the arrows to kind of move them where the teeth would go. I actually want to do that with the front teeth as well. I want to kind of give them a nice arch. And maybe we'll shrink these a little bit this way to give them a subtle kind of canine type feel. Like that, maybe we'll put them a little bit further in the head. Perfect, we can clone those. And then we can just move them off. Maybe we'll make it less canine-y. We can just kind of move them, we'll tilt them, and then we'll push them back in the head. Like so. Very cute. I like them, those canines. They're a little canine-y, huh? Okay. I think that looks pretty good. So these are all of our teeth I want to make these yeah I'll make these a little bit bigger like that so to make this easier let's just take the whole thing and clone it so now we have all of these teeth that are here on the bottom as well um, and we can actually validate all of these so we'll tap here validate tap validate so let's rename this bottom teeth bottom teeth We'll rename this one Top Teeth. Top Teeth. Okay, so for the bottom teeth, all we're gonna do is, let's see, maybe we can just move them down. Maybe we don't need to, yeah, we can just move them down. I was gonna flip them, but I don't think we really need to. We can move them down a little bit. We'll take the other ones and just move them down. Take the last ones and just move them down a bit. There you go. Now, if we want, now these all look good, so I'm just going to tap on the red and just validate. Same thing here, tap here, validate. Okay, so now we have the top teeth and the bottom teeth. They're looking good. I'm going to do a quick save. We'll just add another sphere and make a really simple tongue. So we'll use gizmo. We'll bring it up, 
and in the front so you can kind of see what we're doing. We'll sh oh, I don't know what I was on. We'll shrink it, flatten it, and that's good enough for a tongue. We don't need to go crazy. It's deep in the mouth anyway. We want to make sure that it's low. We make it kind of wide, maybe a little smaller. So now he has a little tongue in there as well. Nice. And last but not least, so let's just rename this tongue. Um, do we, I don't think we want the nose, right? I don't think we want the clown nose, even though it's, it is still kind of cute. That actually is kind of cute. I don't know if I'm going to keep I'll just keep it for now. Okay, let's do some pupils. So oh, let's, val let's validate the tongue. Sorry, right, let's validate the tongue. So we'll add some pupils. Let's change this to P1 or pupils. I For some reason, I call them P1 or P11, apparently. So we're going to do the same thing that we've been doing. We're going to move this to, we're going to shrink it. We'll move it to the eye area. Okay, we'll shrink it a little bit. We want to flatten it. We don't want it to be... Okay, so we'll flatten it and now we just want it to... We want to kind of rotate it so it's kind of on the surface of the eye. Which might be a little... Might be a little tricky. Sometimes it's a little tricky to get, right? Let's make it a little smaller. Flatten it. Push it back a little bit. And sometimes what I have to do in this situation uh, is I just have to go to the eye. And sometimes I just have to actually flatten the eye a little bit. Because sometimes the roundness of the eye can sort of get a little annoying. So sometimes I just flatten it and then just smooth it. Because you don't really notice that it's more, that it's more flat. Okay, so now we can see the eye, and then you can kind of make it as big or as small as you want. But one tip I have is you don't want to put the eye in the middle. You want to put your eye, oh, he's looking like far up. You want to put your eye towards the, um, like sort of close together, like sort of close to the nose. And one thing that I have to do, you might not actually, I kind of like the way the head is. So I'm going to bring the eyes down. I was going to tilt the head forward, but maybe I'll just tilt the eyes. So it looks like his head is just kind of up there and he's looking down. That's actually quite cute. If that makes sense, what I, what I just said. So I was going to tilt the head so I could put the eyes a little higher up. But I kind of like that his head is back a little bit and he's still looking forward. I think that looks a bit funny and it's kind of cute. So if we look at front, that looks good. Okay, so let's hit mirror and just see how it looks. Oh, I think that looks really cute. I think that looks great. And of course you can put the pupils like, looking anywhere, but, but if your head is tilted back and you want them to look straight, then that, that's why I have the, the pupils so low. Uh, if the head was tilted more, then I would put the eyes a little more, but you kind of want them looking at camera, like at you, like at the user. So that's why the eyes are like that. That looks good. And you don't have to do this, but I always do eye dots. I'm going to validate. Um, yeah, I'm going to validate those. The P1. I'll just call it pupils. Here's another thing that I do. I'm going to take both of these. I'm going to clone it. And I'm going to rename this eye dots. So I rename this eye dots. And this is, I'll just rename it um, eye dot. I'm just going to put uh, ED, but it doesn't really work. 
So now that we have eye dots, I'm gonna move this up and over and back and maybe tilt it a little bit, make it a little smaller. Whoop. And I kind of want to move it right above this spot. And then I'm going to take drag and uh, let's see. And I'm just going to kind of drag like a shape like this. I don't know. I just like, I like shapes like that there. So I did it. Let's use another tool. This, let's go to the body. Let's take it off symmetry. And maybe you could want to do an X. Maybe we'll use crease. You can do an X for like the belly button. You can do like a little, what I like to do is a little like, I like to do a little shape like that for like the belly button area. But I like little details like that. Let's go to the leg and let's use move. And let's just kind of like mesh up the, le the, the leg up to the body a little bit. Make it a little cleaner. Maybe take the body and kind of push it in with move. So everything is a little, a little more clean. Looks good. Another cool thing you can do is you can take the body and you can to use inflate. Let's turn symmetry on. We want it to happen on both sides. So above the arm, what if we make like a little skin fold? Well, why is it yellow? Tap here, turn it off. And this is how I do my little skin folds. So I use inflate and then I kind of continuously do this little shape around, you know, whatever this, whatever it is I'm working on. Maybe a little bit in the front too, something like that. I like those. I feel like he's gonna be a little bit front heavy too. I'm trying to think if I print these characters, I don't want them to be front heavy. And he looks like he would fall, he would fall forward. So part of me wants to move the whole head back. If you ever hap if you happen to have to do this, you just take all the parts that are on the head, bottom teeth, head, all the ears as well. I think that's it. You take all the parts that are on the head and just use your gizmo and you can move them back. better it looks a little bit more balanced and since I'm worrying about it being a little front heavy I'm just gonna extend the back of the legs with the, the move tool and just make the, the back of the legs a little bit bigger so hopefully he should be able to stand and I think it looks pretty even I think the head is pretty um, directly on the top okay so this all looks good. I'll do a quick save. Let's voxel remesh everything together, except for uh, like the detail parts. So, oh, there's, there's one more thing that I want to do. I'm sorry. I like to add the little eyelashes. I'll just use tube with path, but now we do want snap. And we can again, tap on screen, drag. And now I'm just going to go along the edge of the eye to about here and then do one off in the distance tap this so now i want the radius to have two nodes i want to make this side bigger and this side smaller and now i want to turn snap off because i want to very sneakily bring this into the mesh so we get that nice clean break right there And then I'm going to add another one here, another node, bring this up and I'm going to tap radius again so I can make this last one smaller. So something like this. Okay. So I think I like that. I might want to change it to profile. Oh, I really like that actually. So I'll make this a little bit smaller, maybe bring it out a little bit. I like it. I'll mirror it so now it's on the other side as well. And once you're happy with it, you can validate it. 
it might take some getting used to just like getting the shapes right and stuff like that but again you can also use move like if you if i want this to like kind of go to the end i can always make sure i tap on it and then just kind of move it a little bit but you know so i'm gonna smooth this out a little bit it's a little bit too soft so it's this number's too low so i'm gonna voxel remesh it maybe 150 should be fine Ooh, that made it look really ugly. So when that happens, I'm gonna go to multi-res, subdivide it first, maybe even twice. And then I'll vox or remesh it a little higher, maybe like 200. Okay, so now I should be able to smooth it and it shouldn't get really ugly like it did. So I'll smooth that. Okay, that looks cool. And if I want this to be sharp again, I'll just use pinch. Pinch is a great tool. It just pinches. Oh, it's yellow. What is with this yellow? It just pinches. As the name would apply, imply, <laughs> apply. Like so. And then we have these nice little eye lashes. I kind of want to flatten this little piece out here. It's kind of bugging me a little bit. Looks like I need to make it flatten a little bit smaller. Or I might even use drag. Drag might be the tool. There we go. Drag is a little bit better. Okay, I'll just smooth it out a little bit. Nice. So now there's some nice eye lashes with some help from the tube tool and profile, which I think is, I really like what they did with profile. Okay, good. So let's do a quick save. And now we'll voxel remesh everything together. Um, we're not going to do, we're not going to remesh the eye dots, the eyelashes, the eyes, the pupils, the teeth, the tongue. Sometimes I don't do the arms because, for example, you might want to move the arms around. Uh, if you wanted to move the arms around but keep them generally in the same spot, you have to move the pivot. So the center of the gizmo is the pivot. So if I was to move the arm around, it would move in the, around the center point, which is the pivot, uh, which will make it move like that. And that's not what we want. So we can tap pivot here. And you might not remember this, but if when you need it, you'll need it. You'll, you'll look back at this. So we move the pivot to kind of where his shoulder would be. Maybe like around here. So it's kind of like the middle of the arm, the back of the arm area. Kind of in the middle. So we tap pivot again. So now if the pivot is back there, then it's going to move in a more natural spot. So, you know, you can kind of move, move the arms around as you like them. How did I have them to begin with? I have them here. Do I like them there? Do I like them a little bit more down? I think I like them a little bit more down. I think I like that. Okay, so of course, you don't have to add the arms if you think you might want to move them in the future. Okay, so uh, let's do a quick save. All right, so let's take the eyes. Let's validate. Anything that's red, we want to validate them and just rename it. So this is eyes. Pupils. Let's validate those. They're already... Do we want the nose? Do we not want the nose? Eye dots. Let's validate them. Ear. Validate. Do we want to do anything else with the ears? No, the ears look good. Okay. Arms. Um, do we want to mesh them together? Yeah, let's just mesh them together. I'm going to validate the arms. Legs, I'm going to validate. Ooh, and what is this? Oh, those are the eyelashes. Oh, you have to, we have to move these out. Let's move them out and up. 
We can validate them, but let's rename them lashes or lashies. Great. Legs, validate. Bum, we'll bring it up. Okay, so everything looks really nice. So sometimes I like to do this. I like to select everything and take a look and make sure there's nothing that's really, really tiny. Okay, so they're all they're all quite big sizes. Uh, nothing is really small. Like if something was like 500, then I would want to raise the resolution before we bring them all together. All right, so now we take the, the parts that we want to bring together. So the head, um, the feet, the ears, the body. What is this mirror? Oh, that's the arms. The arms, the bum, the legs. I think that's it. Tongue, pupils, eye dots. So now we want to bring all these together. I always do a save before I do voxel remesh. So we want a voxel remesh. And now that we have everything kind of how we like it, I want to raise this up to maybe like 350. And then I'm going to remesh. And so what we did now is we have one piece. So I'm going to rename this body. So now this body is all of these pieces together. They still look kind of weird, so I'm going to smooth them out. I'm going to be a little bit delicate because I like this crease here for the skin fold. So some spots I'm a little delicate. I'm keeping symmetry on because the character is symmetrical. So now I'm smoothing out the tuchus into the legs. Okay, we smoothed out the arm already, it looks good. Make this a little bit bigger, smooth out the back of the head, smooth out the head going into the neck, or the body, I guess he has no neck. So you smooth all the spots that um, are connected to other spots so that they just look like one piece. Legs look good, feet look good. Oops, just being a little less aggressive with the feet. Maybe mostly the top. Okay, it looks good. We'll get a little bit of the crotchal area. Under there, you can hit solo. So you can kind of see his bits. Yeah, everything looks good. Great. Okay, so now um, what I like to do next is just um, bring down anything that is a little too, that doesn't need to be so big in size. So for example, the body now, let's go here to where multi-res is, miscellaneous, and decimate. So we decimated that once, so we brought the body down, and it still looks pretty good. I need to smooth under his neck though. I think I missed that. Okay, actually, it might look better with it not that smooth, maybe just a tiny bit. I kind of like that separation. So now the body's 196K, that's not too bad. We'll check the eyes, they don't look too bad. We'll check the eyelashes, they're very big. So the eyelashes will decimate, decimate, and they still look pretty good. Now they're 15.7. We'll check the eye dots, we can probably decimate those once. And what this does is it takes away geometry, so it's taking away a lot of the size. or it's, just, it's taking away the number, but it's not significant enough. If we keep decimating, then it will start to get look broken. But when it's really high, usually you can decimate you know, once or twice. And, you know, see the teeth, they still look good. And actually, for the top teeth, I want to save... I want to voxel remesh these teeth together. So I'm going to voxel remesh them together around 150. I guess we'll do 154. And we'll just kind of smooth them out. And then I'm going to decimate them. Actually, no, I'm not going to decimate them. 28.7 is not too bad. The bottom teeth, I'm going to voxel remesh together. I'm just using the shortcut. This is the same as voxel remesh up here. But this is just a shortcut. See the numbers change. I think we did. Did we do 150 on the top? I don't remember. So we'll voxel remesh them together. 
Getting a little bit of little smooth action. 28.2 isn't too bad. Okay, so I'm going to take the bottom teeth and the top teeth and join them together. So this will just be teeth. I like to call this housekeeping. I'm just kind of like cleaning up everything. Pupils, let's see how big. Okay, we already did that. Tongue is pretty small. Good. So now the character is pretty much optimized. He's not that heavy. 348K, really good. So let's bring it home. I'll just do some quick lighting and maybe some quick coloring and we'll call it a day. So now we can switch from Metcap to Lit PBR. What I like to do is take everything and change the color. So I've selected everything. I'll change this color. I'll tap on this. You can choose, they have some colors here. I have these this terracotta type color that I really like because it's pretty neutral. So I'll hit paint all. So now we've just painted everything that color. So now we'll turn off the environment. This is my own one. You can get on my website if you want, but you can tap it. There's a bunch of there's a bunch of environments. They will all make things look a little bit different. I like to use mine, but for now we'll turn that off. Do a quick save. And now we're going to tap here and we're going to turn on our first light. So we're going to add light. Tap the little pencil and call it key. This is your key light. So this is the key point where the light is hitting your subject. If you have your subject straight looking forward, this light is usually positioned in a good spot. Now this is a sunlight, which means that it's just coming from one direction, kind of generally. It doesn't matter where you place it. All that matters is where this white arrow is. So see how I'm placing it up here? The only reason I'm placing it up here is because it sort of looks like that's where the light will be coming from. But if you want to adjust it, you have to move it around like this. So it's kind of like the sun. Okay, I'll hit undo. Let's bring the intensity up to about two. Okay, that looks good. So now we'll go back with the key light. We'll go over to this option and we'll clone it. And we'll call this one uh, rim light or just rim. So we'll, we'll just move this over because this is now the rim light. And then we want to orbit it. We want to move it over with this ring. See how we see this light on this side? Let's, oh. if you ever miss it, if you, if it goes away, just tap here again and then tap here. And you can also hit this light icons. So then the light icons will stay there. Let's use the red and bring it down. I'll use my finger so it's easier to see. So we want to make it just on the rim edge of the character. So maybe something like that. See that nice bright light? That's what we want. We can bring the intensity up a little bit, maybe to 3.4, 3.5. That's a rim light. So it's nice to have light, shadow, light. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. So let's add another light. And this light, let's make it a spotlight. So we'll tap sun, spot, I'm gonna scroll out. So we'll move this light up and then we'll put it on his face. And maybe we'll make it like right above his head. Maybe we'll do something like that. And you can use this little orange to make the cone angle bigger. So that makes it kind of bigger and smaller. So maybe something like that looks good. Okay, so we have another light. So we might as well use up that spot. So we'll add our last light and let's move it over and let's kind of make another rim light on this side. So maybe we'll do it not as rimmy as this, but maybe just like a little bit of light here on this side as well. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so this will be our, this will be our main spot for the character. So what I'm gonna do is hit this camera and hit add view, and then we'll tap here and I'm just gonna name it one. So whatever you do, if you wanna go back to that view, you just tap here and then you can tap one. 
And you can do as many of those as you want. Okay, so let's take the body and we'll tap this little one here, the materials, and let's make it subsurface. And let's bring the subsurface down to point one or so. Let's take the teeth and make those subsurface and we'll bring it down to maybe point one, two. I think that's all we need. Oh, we can do these eye dots too. So we'll make those subsurface. We'll bring those down to like maybe point one or so. Looks good. Can probably do the eyes as well. Sometimes I just like to do lots of subsurface stuff. I'm going to bring this one to 0.07. Uh, we'll leave it there for now. So let's go ahead and turn on post-process. So that's this little shutter looking button. So we'll hit post-process. Ooh. Why does it look so crazy? Okay, so first things first. Um, I'm going to turn the quality up a little bit. I'm not going to bring it all the way up, just in case some of you don't have the, like, really high-end iPads. I don't want it to start getting messed up. But once you put this on, it's really calculating what your character looks like. So let's actually turn on the environment too. So we go back to the lights and go to environment. So we'll turn that on and let's bring it down to like, just bring it down a little bit. I don't know why this looks so crazy. Okay, so I'm just going to go to none. None might be a little bit easier. Okay, so I put it back to none for post-process. So let's turn on reflection. Let's turn on global illumination. And I usually bring that all the way up to 10. Let's turn on ambient occlusion. You can turn the strength up or down. That handles those little like shadows, as you can see. So you can kind of play around with this to see what you like more. Okay, I think maybe something like that looks looks uh, believable. Um, depth of field is obviously like, it's like with photography. I'm going to leave that off for now. Bloom you can turn on, but it might be a little bit too bright. So you can adjust that. I'm going to leave it off. Tone mapping, you can mess around if you want. I think that's that's what it was before. But we'll just leave that off. Okay. I'm going to bring my quality all the way up. And what is it? What is it? So now I'm going to check my lights again. Okay, rim light. I like to check my lights and just make sure that nothing is too bright. Everything looks pretty good. Okay, so now that we went through the post process, I'm going to leave it on for the coloring part. So now we just have to figure out what color we want our character. So maybe we want him like a... I do orange a lot. I don't know if I do green. Maybe I'll do like a... But this is a fun, oh, maybe I'll do pink. Yeah, I think I like pink. I like pink, so we'll do we'll do it that color. And I'm, I think I might've just breezed by that. So you tap the sphere here, and then you have your roughness, your metalness. This is your color, so you can move this up and down, and then you can find whatever color you want. And then you just hit paint all to color. If you're painting multiple things, you can tap this little eyedropper, and then you can, let's say, grab the color of this. And it'll change it back to that. If you want the pink color, you can grab that and then it goes back. So that's the eyedropper. Um, you can also add layers. So if you wanted to make like a design, but you're not sure about it, you can add a layer here and then you can draw on this design. Let's just say, make something black. Oops. Um, let's see, oh, I was on something else. Let me undo smooth. And go to paint so if i was to paint something here you have a layer so if you wanted to get rid of it or make it lighter something like that layers are really good for that okay i'm sorry i know you guys are ready to go so let's finish this off real quick so we'll go here we'll make the teeth 
maybe a little bit off white. You can have white teeth. I'm going to bring the roughness down so the teeth are glossy. And hit paint all. So for the eyes, we'll go to pure white, no roughness. We want them glossy. For the eye, for the pupils, um, what color do we want them? Oh, do we want them yellow? That's interesting. Uh, maybe we'll just do black. We'll just do black. Nice and shiny. So for the eye dots, let's take the eyedropper and get this pink color, but let's switch it up a little bit and make it a little lighter. Like so. Let's take the eyebrows. We want to use, let's use black, but let's bring the roughness up so there's no shine at all. There we go. I like that. Okay, and if we wanted the nose, we have the nose. So let's say we wanted to make the nose like, maybe, maybe a little bit of gloss, but not as much. So we'll paint the nose on. <laughs> He's got a nose. I don't know if I like the nose or not. The nose looks kind of crazy. Okay, is he actually looking at me? Or do I need to bring these pupils up a little bit? The gizmo. I guess we'll keep him there. Maybe we'll move him up a little bit. Something like that. I still can't tell with the nose. Anyway, uh, so yeah, that's the, that's the character. Uh, quick and dirty. If you want to export... You just go to the little folder. Oh, let's do a quick save. And you would scroll all the way down to your export uh, to render because you're going to make a rendering. And you'll see that you have this uh, cutoff. So just make sure that it's, you know, you position him so that if you want to share it, he's not being cut off. You can do screen. You can do any of these. Um, what's really important when you're sharing is just make sure that you have... Um, I like to use 500. I like to keep this up to two and I have these uh, just when I'm doing the render just to make sure the quality is the best that it can be. And then you just export. Oh, and if you, I'm going to take that off. This is the background color right here. So you can also change that. I want to change it to maybe something a little more warm. something like that okay and you can also change the the temperature of the lights as well so we had like this light coming in from the side maybe we want to make that kind of cool we'll make it blue bluish and then that light is a little bit blue and it's nice to sometimes do the reverse and make this one a little bit warm kind of thing and we can now we can switch to perspective and we can get a look of him get a look at him with the perspective you can kind of change it to like a fish eye or you can just kind of make it normal you know and you can kind of play around with it i think i might like it in orthographic actually but yeah that's it that's the character hopefully that helped let me know don't forget to color the tongue he's already pink but i guess his tongue is also going to be pink I just wanted to show you the nose, uh, what I did with the nose. I just squashed it. So I just kind of like squashed the nose and then I pinched it together and kind of made it sort of a triangle. And then I used inflate and I just kind of inflated around. So it kind of, so it kind of looks like a, a little bit of like a cat's nose, or like a lion's nose, even though he's not a lion. But like I said, I'm always, um, I'm always continuing to work on these things, even after the tutorial. I know I need to stop, but I can. It's just like it's so much fun. And there's always there's always more to do. So sometimes I find it very hard to stop. But eventually, I don't want to keep you guys like forever. But like I said, it's hard. I'm just using another layer now and just making this a little bit darker where like the you know, kind of like the, the pupil would be 
I want to make sure I bring the roughness up so there's no there. Something like that. I might color in the inside of the mouth too, but you get it. All right, that's it. I think he looks cute now. He's almost like a little panther, which I love. All right, keep drawing, keep sculpting. I'll really see you guys in the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to go more in depth, then definitely check out my Skillshare classes where I am a top teacher. I have about 50 classes, both Procreate and Nomad Sculpt. I also have a few classes on Udemy. So if you want to learn more or you just like my style, you like the way I teach, you want to support me, those are some other places that you can do it. Thanks again. Keep drawing, keep sculpting. I'll see you all in the next video.